Okay, so the first time I will do, I don't know who of you received, um, probably all of you received the, the message on Meetup. So what I will first do is to send you um, a couple of links. So one link is um, for a um, file where I will be working on um, so that you can see what I am also typing and you can copy paste it and also try it. So here it is. It has something already in it, but will we, I think, at first we'll start with the presentation and then we will go to this link. And then the other thing are the materials of today. Um, if you want, you can download it, but it's also like not mandatory. It's just if you want to try yourself while I am talking or if you just are anxious and want to have it already. So there are the two links. One is a file that you will only be able to see what you what I'm writing and the other one are a lot of files to download. Our files. So I will start then sharing my screen. Um, let me see. Share. Share screen. So I guess you all can see now the presentation, right? Yes. Yes. Full screen. So the idea of today is just to do a smooth uh, intro to Shiny Apps. So it's going to be really basic, but I think it really helps to start with, with building these apps. I mean, for everyone that uses R, I think it's a great tool because um, it sudden, you suddenly go for just a static HTML or markdown or a static plot to something that looks really cool. It's not really difficult if you already use R, so are just a couple of things you have to know and take into account, and a couple of new functions you have to know, and then you're really like a profi. I mean, I, 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 I don't know, I did a whole presentation of my work uh, at work, and then at the end of, well, at the end, I mean, I was just presenting a lot of models and things, and at the end, everyone liked the shiny app because it looked really cool. <laughs> so, I mean, it was just the easiest thing to do for me, and it was what everyone liked. Uh, so, I think it's a very good tool to learn. Um, so, um, there is a, I think I, I, this was also in the description of what I sent, but there, there is a shiny gallery that um, has a lot of examples of, of what can be done. And there are like a lot of very cool things, uh, and then also some more basic um, apps. I know, I like for example this one. Um, sometimes it takes a bit too long, um, but then I don't know. This is about like different uh, football players, how good they are, uh, and you can just um, choose different characteristics of the of the players and then yeah and see how yeah um see the, yeah see okay the how they what are the characteristics of, of each football player um I mean, at the beginning. Um, okay, now I'm back in the presentation. So um, I wanted to have a look at, yeah, at, the, uh, at one of the shiny apps. So this one is about, there are a lot about sport. This one is about golf. I also know nothing about golf. But I really like this one because, I mean, it's quite complex. So, for example, you can, here you can see, like, the score of the, of the different players during the years. Um, in golf, the less points you have, the best. And then you can just, for example, filter um, the results. And then, for example, you can only see the winners. Um, and then if you know a little bit about R, you can already probably imagine how you will do that to, to 
filter your data to leave, you probably have many columns. There is one column where it says, okay, was this player a winner? Was this player um, top 10? Or was just others? And then you probably imagine how you do that using R. And then the idea is that we will be running the same code, but we will be letting some of the filter variables. So we are going to be filtering by, for example, which kind of player it was, and we will be letting these kind of filters um, open so that the user can choose. So I will also go back here. So actually, the Shiny app has two main components. One is the user interface. So for example, here, that's what the user will see. And the user interface will have, of course, the possibility to um, choose inputs. And it will have also plots or tables or something that the um, user will see, which we are going to be the outputs. And behind that, there will be a server. In the whole meetup, the server will be my computer in this case. And the server will be just uh, be a computer that runs R. So in this case, I mean, the, the user will be able to choose a, an input that will trigger some, some R code on the server and the R code will run, will produce an output, and that output will be, um, again, will go back again to the user interface. Uh, and that's the whole architecture of the, chi the Shiny app, and it's good to have that in mind so that um, when we build the Shiny app, I guess it's going to be a bit easier. So how do we start uh, with the Shiny app? So we actually just write, okay, there is a user interface that has um, some some page structure, so the, the page has some some structure. It will have a sidebar and a, a side panel and a main panel, or two panels in the top of the screen and two panels in the bottom of the, of the screen. But that, I mean, in order to to create a user interface, we need to um, create the user interface object. And that is something that is going to be in all the Shiny apps. We will have a user interface object that will have the um, widgets to be able to, to, to let the user um, input some variables. And we also have the outputs. Everything will be in this user interface. And that's what um, the user will see. And there be the Shiny app will also have the server part, which is a function that has as arguments, inputs, and outputs that, of course, will be retrieved and will be go back and will go back to the user interface. So will be retrieved from the user interface and will go back to the user interface. And this function will, will be just a normal R code that we are going to run. So inside the user function, the, so, sorry, inside the server function, uh, we will have the R code just mostly normal R code, as we can imagine. Um, that will be run each time the user changes some input. Um, and so in order to run the app, then we will say, okay, we have to call the function shiny app, we have to define a user interface, and we have to define a server function. So um, this is the simplest shiny app possible. Um, so uh, even if I just go and copy this, I just try it on my, on my R, we can try. So for, I mean, now I can say file, new file. So that's how I open a Shiny app. I just go file, new file, and I just say Shiny web app. I am going to call it app. I'm going to save it there. And it already has as it already has an app that you can try, but I will I will just erase this and I will just paste our very simple example. And then when you have an app, when you have a shiny app um, open, then you have a couple of new buttons. So for example, for example, you will have this button here that that is just run up. And of course, very important, you need to have uh, the library shiny already installed, and you have to um, load the library. So I just run the app, and then the app is running, but it's just empty. Um, there is no problem there. I just have an empty page, but I already have an app. <laughs> I already created the shiny app. Uh, but we are not stopping here, <laughs> even though you already can do it. 
can create the shiny app. So this is the simplest possible shiny app. And now I will just leave like in deep waters and not so clear waters, and I will have a look at the code of this app that we looked uh, about the um, uh, golf players. Um, so I'm just loading again this and I am going to here the good thing about the shiny gallery is that you can also uh, view the code behind yeah and I'm going to also so I'm going to go to the code here so this is the code I guess you all can see it uh, and as you see so it says well it has a description and it's, it starts just loading all the required libraries um, that you will need and if I just don't move the screen and I'm, I just stay there, you can see that the whole code really looks like R code. This is just plain R code, normal R code, no differences. Um, so this person is sourcing some files, so it's probably using functions that he created and is loading these functions into the R um, uh, environment. Then it's reading some. It's reading the data um, from his from where the data is. So the folder that's called data. It's creating a variable that says, "Okay, latest tournament 2019." And now we start what, with the real with, with the specific shiny app part of the code. And as you see, he's also here uh, creating a user interface uh, object. That is what we see when we load the app. And then we have, we have a lot of code, a lot of code, very complex Shiny app, a um, lot of things. And I go down and down. And now at some point, I again uh, find the server function. Um, I mean, this is to show you that the, the, the app can be really complex. I mean, this app is very, very complex. It has many tabs and very different things that the app does, but it always has the same structure. Um, and if I go to the end, at the end, it also calls uh, the app. So it says, run this shiny app. So with the function shiny app, it says, run this shiny app with this user interface and with this server function. So this will be there for the simplest to the most complex, complex shiny app. Um, in the first versions of Shiny, there was the possibility of having, instead of only one file with the server and the user interface, it was a possibility to have two different files, one that only had the user interface and one file that only had the server function. I am just telling it in case you see it, but it, they say it's going to still be supported, but um, I guess they, so our studio that is the ones that created um, uh, Shiny apps now recommend to have everything on one file, except that your file is or, or your code is incredibly long, and they recommend to have everything in one file. And I think it's it's nice that the whole app is in just one file. And um, so I presentation now. Sorry for that. <laughs> um, uh. Okay. Uh, yeah, so as we see, every Shiny app has this user interface that defines how the Shiny is going to look like and has a server function that is where the R code is going to be run and that will get the inputs, run the code, and retrieve the outputs. And the thing is that, okay, very nice, but how, how do we do that? How do we get the inputs from the user and how do we get back the outputs uh, to the user interface? Um, Mm. So let's start by the user interface. So um, this is another very simple Shiny app. The difference now is that the user interface has some content. The content is, um, so I have a title panel. So I have a couple of things here. So these are all functions that come with Shiny. The first one that I have here is a fluid page. It's saying, okay, um, it's going to build a page that is going to adapt to the different screens uh, where it's going to be, yeah, where it's going to open. So it's going to be a fluid page. It's going to be kind of uh, flexible. Then I will have a title panel to write my title. That's, that's um, 
again, um, a function I'm calling. And then here I'm saying, okay, I will, hide, I will have this layout. I will have a sidebar layout, which is the, also the one that, at least for most of your apps, you could just use this layout. So this sidebar layout has just a sidebar panel with, where usually you will put all the different widgets for, uh, to allow the user to input variables and then a main panel. Uh, so he, here you specify, okay, what I'm going to uh, have on my sidebar panel. Here I have just text, but I will be able to put, uh, for example, um, a button or some checkboxes, for example. And then in the main panel, I, here I also have text, but I will be able to have a plot, for example. And then I have the user interface. And I will copy this again, and I want to show you something. Um, so I will run now this app. It will just uh, look like, so for example here, it should look like uh, the presentation, really a sidebar panel. In this case, it doesn't really look like a sidebar panel, but if I open it, then it looks like a sidebar panel. It's just because it's adapting to the size of the screen. And when I, what I wanted to tell you is that actually what the user interface does, so, um, so what this fluid page, this function does, and what is saved in the user interface is just uh, an HTML object. It's just a HTML code that is going to run and it's going to generate this, um, this uh, web page. So for example, if I run this thing, uh, in my environment, I will have a lot of things, but I also have this user interface object right here, it's just data, that was created when I just ran this code. <clears throat> and if I just go here and say user interface to see what is inside that variable, I just see a lot of text, which for the ones of you who already saw, uh, once uh, some HTML code, this is just HTML code. And it's creating, so it's creating the HTML that the browser will read to create, to, to create the app. Um, you can always ask questions if there is something that is not clear. Uh, and for example, yeah. Let's skip one. Okay, so now we know that uh, we can create a user interface we know that we have a server function that gets input from the user interface and return outputs, but we need to be able to communicate this server function with this um, user interface uh, object. And how we do that? So, um, I'm thinking how to do that. Uh, so I will do something. I will just go back to the original app. So what I did is just uh, on to reset to go back to the simplest Shiny app that when you say file, open file, open a Shiny app to the Shiny app that, that is created, I'm going to run it. Um, and then you see that now it's also a sidebar layout, a, yeah, a sidebar panel. Um, so I also have a sidebar panel and a main panel, and what I have now is just a slider to choose the number of pins of a history. You can see it clearly. So as you see, I'm just choosing the number of pins of the histogram, then some R code is running. This R code is creating this histogram, and the histogram is uh, coming back and is shown in this user interface. So the thing is that first we have to tell R, okay, put a slide bar there and use the number of the slide bar to, uh, yeah, first put a slide bar there and save the, the, the number the user is, is choosing. That's the first thing. The second thing is that, okay, run a code that is going to create a histogram that is going to use this number as, a, as the number of bins. And the third thing is once that you created, once you created that plot, send this plot again to the user interface and display the result. So these are like the three things. Um, and when, once you understand how that works, then it's like the world of possibilities open. Um, so 
going back to here. So I have the user interface and the function I am going to use to create this slider is this function slider input and this function will create just this slider. That's the cool thing. You don't really have to know about JavaScript or a lot of uh, web development. You just have to under know a couple of functions that are already created by Shiny and you have to know, okay, how to communicate these this different parts of the Shiny in order to be able to create the whole amazing thing. So you actually just, there is actually just a function that is called slider input that will create the slider. Um, this, um, the, the value that the user chooses will be saved in the, in the, um, uh, will be saved in the input ID, so it will actually be saved um, in a list. So that we are going to talk a bit, but this 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 value will be saved. This value will be passed to the user to the server function. Will be used to create the histogram, and then the whole histogram will be returned to the to the user uh, interface and will be displayed. We are going to go step by step to do things, right? But the first thing is that okay, let's um, create a use. Let's create a sidebar layout. So I'm just uh, going to copy again. Copy again this, just to do it with you. Um, so now you can see my screen, right? So. I have the sidebar plan panel, but in the sidebar panel, what I want is to create um, um, a slider to allow the user to uh, input some variable. And this, sli this slider, this um, slide, slide, uh, sorry, slide, um, this slider function. So this slider input is just a function, and as with any function in R, I can just uh, have look for some help using this function. So I can say slider input with a question mark, and then I will be open the help for the function. And as you see, the slider input has um, a lot of these functions has some inputs. The first one is the input ID, and this is the ID. So this will be the, the name of the variable where the value will be saved. So if the user chooses mm, number five, this five will be saved uh, in the input ID. I can call this input ID n value, input value, whatever, uh, but it has to be, um, in, yeah, the, the parameter to tell R which is going to be the name of the input is this input ID. The label is going to be the text that is going to be displayed uh, in the user interface. So that's go, the, the text that is going to tell the user what are you doing, what, what's the input you are choosing. And then this, these two uh, parameters are in any input type. And then each input, each different input possibility has different values. So let's go. So for example, in this case, um, I will, for example, here say, okay, sidebar panel. Um, instead, of the, instead of this text, I just want to put a slider input and then the input ID will be n or no, or input. I could call this whatever I want, but I'm just calling input number. And then the label will be scenario vision. Then I'm going to run this up. Let me see what I have there. Yeah. I'm going to run this up and now. So value is missing without default. This is a nice thing about um, live coding that 
So if you say, if you see the app didn't open because I have an error that is saying value is missing with no default, so probably I have to also say which is a minimum value, and zero, which is the maximum value, which is the uh, value. So the value is like the default value, the value that is going to be at the beginning. And let's say so I'm going to run this app now. It's working, I'm happy. So it started at 50. It, um, I have a slide, bar, a slide bar that is doing nothing, but I can play with it. And this, this number now, this number is saved inside a list that is called input. And that's very important. That's always like that in, in Shiny. So there will be the user interface will create a list with all the inputs. In this case, I only have one input. This input is um, where the slide bar is. And in the, um, so in the presentation, the, slide, the, the input ID is num. In my was number, but we can also change it. So it's the same as in the presentation. Um, so the user interface will create a list with many values inside, and these values are going to be the variables that the user is choosing, right? So if the, um, to, if the user chooses 25, then input dollar sign num. This value, remember, is this, how do I call the, the value? So the input ID, it will be 25, it will be 50 or 75, depending on what the user chooses. Uh, but it's very important because this is always like that. So all the things that the user is choosing or that the user can change are going to be saved in one, inside one list that contains all the variables. In this case, we have only one variable that's the output of our slide bar and we'll change, that's only the, the only thing that the user can choose. Um, and now there is not only slide, sliders, so there are a lot of different uh, widgets that are already um, available in Shiny, and there are uh, different functions. So we used uh, slider input, so we use this function, but we could, for example, also use numeric input, so this other function. And this other function will also have the parameter um, input ID, so this parameter here. And whatever the user chooses in this number will be saved inside this uh, input list in the, va in the variable with the name that of the ID we chose. And that's the thing that is going to, that's the thing that the user can change. But there are a lot of things. So we can use text, uh, we can input dates, we can, depending on what we want, um, there are a lot of these possibilities. And the good thing is that you can create that just by, by, by calling one R function. So these are all the possibilities. And I think there are a couple more. <laughs> I just listed the more, most common. Okay. So um, I think we already did this. So this is what I already showed you. So it's just a, a Shiny app that um, has only a user interface, has a sidebar panel with, um, ah, this, this, is, this is a bit different. This has a numeric input, not a sidebar panel. So it's the other, it's just typing a number. Um, yeah, and let's, I will just, copy it and show you how this looks now. Um, ah, I, I have to stop the app. The app is running until I stop it and my R um, session is the, is the server, so I cannot use the R session if the app is running. So now I will run the app, but that's the new app with the number input. And now, what I, I don't have a slider anymore, I just have this number of here. And again, there is nothing. And so the new thing that is here is this um, main panel dot output. So in the 
in this panel, I just already told the, the, app, the app that there is going to be a plot there, but the plot is not appearing. But if I, again, if I run this, and if I see how the user interface look like, now, if, you, if we compare this to what we had before, now we have um, here a special place created to, to, to hold our plot. So it says class shiny plot output, and that's where our plot will be at the end. Okay. So, so far we are only in the user interface, uh, but now we are going to the, um, to the server function. So um, the user chose a number. This number was saved in this, um, in this list with the number that we chose for the ID of the widget. And now we are going to um, create something with that. In this case, we are just creating a histogram with the number of observations. So I just, um, you can ask whenever you want because I have the, 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 the feeling I'm going, um, I'm just talking a lot. <laughs> but I want to present all this and any question you can ask. Um, so now we have just, we get this input number. This input number is now inside our, this is going to be inside our render function. And this part is something you probably can recognize. So here we are just creating a histogram from um, numbers that come from a normal distribution and the, num the, the numbers, the, the amount of data inside this um, normal distribution is, um, um, is decided uh, or is chosen by this number. So this is how many, random, how many norm random numbers that belong to a normal distribution I'm creating. And this is something that comes from the input and the input with the ID num, num, so number, and this comes from the input dollar sign num, which is actually the value that the user is um, choosing. So we have this histogram. The thing is that we also have, it's not as easy as creating the histogram because we, can, we also have to tell the app that this histogram is something that will change each time the user changes something. And how we do that, we shall say render plot. It's another function that comes with the shiny pack package, and it's just a family of functions. So it's the render family of functions. So here, um, that will tell um, that will tell R. Okay, the code that you are you are putting inside is something that will be changed each time the user changes something, right? And then you had to also say, okay, what I am going to create uh, inside this block that I want to give back to the user interface. Is that a plot? Then I will just use render plot. And then inside the plot, I will just uh, put my code. Or it's just a table or is an image. There are also many possibilities on what you can uh, render. In this case, I just use render plot. and. This is a function and I'm using these uh, braces or curly brackets um, just to be able to put the whole R code as a unique chunk um, without having to take care if I have many lines. So the idea is that when you use these uh, braces, then you can have a code that has many, many lines and that's not, that's not going to be a problem. So, um, <clears throat> Again, this number 100 will not be 100, will be just the value that is, that is cho chosen by the, by the user. <clears throat> um, okay, so now we have some more, um, yeah, a bit more, comp a bit more complex server function. Now I'm choosing a title and an X label. And I also am saving, so I'm also using this render plot function to create a histogram as before. You can see here that um, the number of normal, of, of numbers or yeah, of 
samples that are going to be created inside the normal distribution are, come, are inside this, again, are inside this um, list. But then I have main equals title and X label equal X label. These things are something that I'm not letting the user to choose. I'm not letting the user to choose. I am just defining them here. And the thing is that this, this render function, so here this render plot function, is going to be run each time the user changes something, right? But the thing is that the title and the X label are not going to change each time the user changes something. And uh, everything that is inside this, this function will be run every time the user changes something, the whole thing inside the function will be run. This is a very simple code, so it doesn't matter if this assignment uh, is made many times. So it doesn't matter if I assign normal distribution to, type, to the variable title 15 times because the user chose 15 numbers. Um, but when you have a more complex code, it's good to know that what is inside this function is going to run each time the user changes something and what is outside the function will be run one time when the user opens your app. So for you to have into account, because sometimes the shiny apps get slower and then you can think about that in order to make it uh, faster. Okay, and now we already know how to tell the user how we can let the user input a variable. We know how to create an output uh, using, that, using that input. And now the last part is um, displaying again in the user interface this plot that we do. And that is done with another family of functions that are the output functions. Um, and these output functions are again in the user interface because um, it's actually what we are going to show. For example, in here I already have I already have this plot output uh, function, so it's an output function. Uh, and that was the space that, that was saved there. And now, um, okay, the, um, the thing is that, okay, how do we tell R? Okay, I am going to display a, a plot, but which plot, right? Uh, I could, in, in my code, I could have many, more, more than one plot. So the thing is that, okay, which plot I am going to display there? And this output ID, so it's the same, it's similar to um, the input ID, but now we have an output ID, which is here called his or histogram, which is actually, if we go back here, is actually where I am saving my plot. So all render functions have to be saved inside a, a new list that now is called outputs, not, more, not any more inputs, but now we have a new list that is called outputs. And inside this list, we, can, we will have everything that is going to go back to the user interface. And we, again, we can call the, so the list has always to be called outputs, but the variables inside the list can be called however you want. And now here, output ID, so when we say, okay, parameter output ID, that means that plot output will uh, search in the output list a variable called hist in this case. And if that variable exists, then it go, it's going to display a plot there because I am using the function plot output. If it were, I, will, I were using the function plot text, then the, the output ID, the expected output ID will be just, for example, a string. In this case, the expected output is a plot. Um, I want to see this. And that's what this, um, I think not. Ah, yeah, I remember. So there is usually, um, there is usually like a correspondence between the render functions and the uh, output functions. So if there is a render plot, there will be a plot output. Uh, if there is a render text, there will be a text output and so on. Okay. Um, Questions so far? So now I guess we, you could already with the information, you could already create any app 
So, are there questions here? I have one. Mm -hmm. So, when we do this, whatever enters inside render plot can can we use like for instance now you've used just normal histogram function can we actually use packages that we normally use in r for instance ggplot also yeah you can, can use, put them in there okay yeah you can use for example ggplot mm -hmm. you have to load the library at the beginning of your app when you load Sh shiny you will have to load ggplot but you can use anything cool. <laughs> Any library uh, that works for normal r Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll work there as well. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So, um, let me see, how do we go on? I'm thinking if you want to try a bit to do something. Um, so, let's do that. Let's, I will just, can you, mm, can you see when I just let me see? Just go here. So can you see here in, in the link I sent you about the Dropbox? Can you see what I wrote? Yeah. Yes, no. Lisa, could you send the link again for um, a few yeah. people who joined later? Yeah. And I can't see it in Dropbox. You can't? Or you? Uh, but I just refreshed and no, it. It's the same 26 lines that were there earlier. And so I will, we'll see if this works. I mean, I'm trying. It's, I'm just innovating. <laughs> if it doesn't work, um, doesn't matter what I'm trying. I am going to send so again the link. I will stop sharing the, the screen for a while. So this is the link to the Dropbox. And you, so you will have to refresh it to be able to see whatever I write. Um, so far there is just um, only a very short shiny one. And no one click on the link I sent because that was still the Zoom link. I can't seem to copy any of those things. Um, so do you see the shiny up there? Yes, 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 yes. So my suggestion would be that you try, so that shiny app was the very first I showed you. So we're, we're just, um, there is just this, I mean, I'm just displaying some text on the panels, right? Yeah. Are you able yeah. to see it on your arm? You probably, you need to have shiny installed, right? Um, because if you are able to run it, then I would suggest like to take, um, I don't know, between eight and ten minutes for you to try a little bit to insert a slide bar input or a number input to create a very, I, I just stay simple, like create a very simple plot or something where you just get one number and then re um, create a plot and then you can show it. Um, if you want, um, you can either put chat, you can, if you think it's worth it to try, I think it's worth it because then you understand, it. yeah, then we shall say until, yeah, we give um, 10 minutes, I will be here to answer questions, but 10 minutes for you to try. Um, to modify that, that code. You will have to copy the code, paste it into R, and use what we have done. And don't copy paste everything I did, just try you, <laughs> yourself. Otherwise, mm, I don't know. Well, maybe you can copy paste and modify, that's also an option. <laughs>
Hello, Lisa. Hello, Divya. Hi. Uh, I, I didn't have the link, so I came late. But maybe you can tell me how can I start um, the package, the shiny package. Where can I find this? Or you have to install it using R. Like I will just. Do you have R installed? R Studio installed? Sarah? Yeah. Yeah. So I will send you a private message. Okay. Good. Thank you. Not perfect with my R Studio. Okay, how is it going? Are you able to do something or are you stuck somewhere? Um, could you reproduce the example? Do you have the feeling you are completely lost? Do you have the feeling this is too easy? <laughs> you are somewhere in the middle. 
I'm still trying to load the package because R seems to want to restart and reload some other packages before I um, install Shiny. I don't know if anyone else is having the same trouble. Okay. Okay, so two more minutes and then we go on. Okay, um, where did you get? <laughs> so I tried to make a slide bar, uh -huh. but it didn't work. Or it's, it's running, but it's not showing me anything, I think. Okay. Do you have your code in the, yeah. in the chat? Yeah. So. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, it just shows it's empty, so wait a minute. Mm. Let's just copy this and try it. So I will share again my screen and we go to R. We'll see what happens. So I'll just close this. This is what I wanted to do. seems not to let me copy. I will have a look. Mm -hmm. So are you currently sharing your screen? No, right? No, no, no. The thing is that for some reason I cannot copy. It seems like the chat does not let me copy. Julius, are you trying to say something to us? Um, yes, before. Oh, okay. um, but, but it's a more general question, so. That's okay. Okay. Um, I, I just qu question myself if it's the build up of the Shiny app, if it's always the same. So you have a sidebar, a main panel, and a header 
or could could um, you have maybe two main panels, two outputs? Yeah. yeah. So this sidebar layout is like um, mm. pre-built layout that you can use. But in and now I'm going to share my screen. Um, but let me yeah. So in one of the slides, so in the in one of the slides, let me share the screen again. So in one of the slides here, um, so in one here, um, there is a link to uh, an article where you can see other layouts. So actually, this sidebar layout is like a um, simple pre-made layout, but then you have the possibility to create like using rows and columns all the different panels you want. And unfortunately, I cannot copy the code, and I can also just not see the error like, like that. Um, Would you like me to make a hack MD for everyone to share stuff? Yeah, or a Google Docs or something. Yeah, can, can do that too. But uh, meanwhile, now I'm showing my screen. So meanwhile, let's do a recap. Um, this is what we saw, right? So just um, yeah, some recap. So we actually use um, some we use some uh, widget to let the user um, input some value, uh, and then this value is saved in a list that is always called input dollar sign whatever we choose here in input ID. Uh, one question for yeah. that: yeah. Is it possible to see the input like the, the list? the values while like code, like writing the code? Mm. Like to see, okay, which, yeah. like if I have a more complex app, okay, what inputs do I have actually? Yeah, actually uh, here, ah, okay. my global environment now, that there is a list input and that you can see that. I am, um, so probably when you, if you just run the app, um, the variable is not going to be saved in your global environment. I probably need to run the, the code. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, then we just create um, an object that we are, that is going to be listening to this uh, input to see if it changed and it's going to create the, the output we are going to show using a render function. This random function is saved again in an output list. We can again choose um, the name of the variable, but it has always to be inside the output list. And then we go back to the user interface and we plot this uh, output we created. And that's like how um, Shiny works. Um, and now, Divya, did you, could you create the doc? Yeah. I just shared it. It's just a Google Doc so everyone can use it without the hack and uh, So, Mega, do you want to paste your code there? Uh, the, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, I did something something really simple if you want me to, to share the code or just... Yeah, sure. You can put your name on the Google Docs and paste your code under your name. Uh, so uh, where one code ends, it's not to know who did what, but just to know where something ends and something finishes. Um, Nice, now I can see. Um, that's um, the whole code of your app, Mega? No, no, I think that's not the whole thing. Okay. Just to know. Um, this is just what is inside. 
do you want to paste the whole code? So it's, yeah. I'm sure it's not a problem that you missed something, but that you. And I'm not able to copy paste from the Zoom chat, so I'm going to do it from the R script. Yeah, yeah that was the problem I had. Also, yeah. Unfortunately. So the idea is to like um, work a bit with what you did. And then I'm going just to show you a more a bit more complex app so that you can see also what other things yeah, you can do. Um, yeah, so you have an idea which are the next steps. Yeah. Yeah. It's not done, sorry. So now it's the whole code. No. <laughs> One minute. Yeah. Okay, now, now it's the whole code, and I'll just remove nice. what I, yeah. It's the whole user interface part. And I didn't, yeah, and I didn't, yeah, I'll just um, copy paste okay. the server one. So I will. Yeah, and the server was the same. Yeah, now it's the whole thing. So it's, I will share my, I will share my screen again. So now you, this is the code, this is the code, right? Mm -hmm. And when I, so you add a slider input, you use minimum, maximum and value. Yeah. Um you also added like a main panel where there is a go there is going to be a plot. And yeah. when I run it, I don't know why, but when I run it, I get this error that says uh, again argument input ID is missing with no default. Okay. And what so what does this mean is that whatever it's not working because the name of the variable that saves the input is missing, this input ID. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is input ID equals no. Um, this, it's missing. And the problem if it's missing is that it does not know how to save this variable into this input list. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's ID with a small d. So if we... If, again, if I run here um, slider input, I will probably get the information which are the the arguments that are uh, mandatory. So usually input ID is mandatory and sometimes it depends. Input ID is always mandatory. Level is always um, non-mandatory because you can write nothing. Mm -hmm. okay. Depending on which um, with get to use, others might be mandatory or might not okay. be mandatory. But now let's try to run it now, see what happens. And now label is missing, so actually label can be mandatory. Uh, just go for number here. And the thing is that, um, and now we have the app. Uh, and as you, yeah. Uh, I think there is also another thing here in this code. Oh no, it's fine. So yeah, that was the problem. Um, so in this case, it was easy to debug because there was an error that was saying something. Sometimes mm -hmm. shiny apps are not so easy to debug because sometimes you just get a, a, an error that is not so easy to understand. And sometimes your app runs, but you don't see the plot. It's not so. It's not always so so nice. Okay, and what is the difference between sidebar layout? Yeah. And sidebar panel, because right now I've used sidebar panel, but, but I see that in some other code that you've written, you've written sidebar layout. And yeah, then actually, yeah, I think um, that's something if I just stop running there and I just start it now. Uh, if, I don't know if you see, you see here that this, the, 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 what should be the um, side panel is occupying the whole 
screen, mm -hmm. the, this light gray, and that's because you are actually not creating a sidebar, a, a side, sidebar layout, or uh, I want to say the exact word, which is um, uh, so. You are not, um, yeah, sidebar layer. You are not creating a sidebar layer. You are just creating a sidebar panel and a main panel. Yeah. And um, the difference is that at some point, for example, here, so the user interface does not always show the sidebar panel and the main panel because you didn't mm -hmm. have this layout. And yeah. You had yeah. only the, the sidebar. But when I, increase it for some reason now it's better mm -hmm. uh, that's the difference you are not creating this layout where that has it always um sidebar panel and a main panel okay so um a um, couple of more things are there any more questions so far do you feel already a bit introduced into this shiny world <laughs> yeah okay um, so another important thing is how to share the shiny app. So the idea of the shiny apps is to share the shiny app. So um, one option is to just um, use your own computer as we have been doing to show your shiny app. The thing is that of course you have to, you must have R installed, you must have R shiny also installed. So it's not so easy if you just want to show it uh, or send it to someone that does not use R. It cannot be shared just as easily as a markdown because it's not self-contained. It needs a server that runs R. So it needs a computer running R. So it's, it cannot be shared just in a self-contained um, file. So our studio created this shinyapps.io, which is a server that runs already R. And uh, for like individuals and normal users that do not require a lot of um, data exchange and the, uh, um, high amounts of data, this works perfectly. Then you just created an account there um, and then you can upload your apps there. And the thing is that the apps have to be called always as I have been calling my apps. The, the, the file has to always be called app.r. Uh, the folder can be called as uh, however you want, but the file has to be called app.r in order for the for the yeah for the server to identify your 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 your, uh, your um, app. Because you can also upload other R files that are going to be used, for example, that have functions you created, but they should not be called app.r. Um, and then, um, so R Studio also created like, um, oh, like an open source server, this thing I just never tried, I just heard about that, where you, that you can just like um, kind of create your own server that runs R, uh, use, actually using uh, some open source code that R Studio um, developed. Uh, I didn't try this, but actually for what I needed, for me it was um, good to use the shinyapps.io. Uh, and then a couple more things um, that uh, are good to learn at some point is well here we cover this intro to shiny so now i mean you can do a lot of things actually uh, what we did today is actually simple but if you have ggplots or other are i don't know um team maps or i don't know other things you can do with r i don't know maps or plots or even displaying the output of models uh, all those things are things that you can already do. Then how there is a whole, like another chapter, it's how, so I told you that these render functions are always um, looking at the inputs and are always looking at whether the input changed or not. But sometimes you may not want like 
to your plot to change immediately after the user um, changed the input. Maybe you want to wait until the user press a button or you want to wait a couple of seconds or whatever. And in order to be able to customize that, then you have to go a bit in another um, set of functions that are already in Shiny that uh, customize this reactivity, like how the, the, the app behave. Um, and then to cost customize the appearance, so as, you, as, as we saw, um, everything in the user interface is at the end some HTML code. So actually, if you know a bit of HTML, then you can customize your, your apps. And then if you know a bit of CSS, which is also quite useful if you are uh, using Markdown, also you can kind of change the appearance. And there are, I don't know, good free online tutorials about these things and are quite easy. I mean, it's just uh, defining variables and saying, defining classes of text, if each text um, has a different class. And then you say in your CSS file, which will be another file, how, to, how, how that class will be uh, customized, wh which color it will have, um, which size it will have, and et cetera. So in the presentation, there are some resources, so something about reactivity, something about layout, some written tutorials you can follow, um, some video that I also like. I think um, lots of the things, the things we talked about are in this video or the first part of this video and here the shiny gallery. Um, yeah. um, so. So, questions so far? No. <laughs> so, the idea now is that, that to, I will create um, in this, um, in this um, file that we are sharing, I will create a shiny app using some data from last week, Tidy Tuesday. Um, and the idea is a, a little bit to see how it works. I mean, um, kind of like coding. So you also will see the, the, the errors, messages, and everything that, that I will get. And the idea is also to like um, see some a bit more complex things that we can do. So now I will be working on this um, on this file um, that we are sharing via Dropbox. Here, as I here, I'm just um, uploading the data. So I'm outside, now I'm outside um, the shiny part of the, of the app, so I will load the data from, from the web. And this data is about penguins. So if I just share my data. So it's um, data about different species of penguins. So there are um, Three species of penguins. Uh, so actually, there are three species of penguins: Adelie, Kento, and Kingstrap. I don't know them, um, but the idea is that there is some information about, for example, the bill length and the flipper length and the body mass of these penguins. And so the idea, the, the general idea, is to create an app where I can just compare the different species, uh, but I can choose which characteristic I want to use to compare the species. Um, so I just have the data. So I will change um, the simple shiny apps for the data. And then instead of a slide bar input, now I want to use um, button, um, checkbox or checkbox buttons because I want to be able just to let the user choose um, yeah, which, which characteristic uh, he wants to see, bill length or flipper length. So I'm not going to use sidebar panel. I'm going to go back to my presentation, which I'm going to use myself as a <laughs> reference because my memory is not so good. So I want to use a um, radio button, I think. Yeah, a radio button. So 
I know there is this function, radio buttons. I'm going to see radio buttons here. And again, I also have input ID. I will tell you, uh, I will call it variable. Like that. And now I just uh, have choices. So I just have, have choices that are going to be displayed. Uh, and which choice will be selected by default. So I will just here say um, choices. Then see how we then choices. But very important, I'm not using any more slider input. I am going to use a radio button. Here, input ID variable, label, mm, choose. Display. Uh, and then choices. Um, so choices is actually like um, it's like a vector, so it will be a vector. But I just put okay, um, the name the button will have. So it's explained here, but it's, I'm going to put the name the button will have, and in the other side, side I will put uh, which is actually going to be saved. So for example. Um, I will say here uh, bill length. So for the user, the user will see bill length. And then what is going to actually be um, chosen is the name of the column, because then I, I'm going to display the, the column that the um, user chose, right? And then I'm going to do this for all the other buttons, and now I think I'm, uh, so bill length, flipper, flipper length, um, column names, my data, so I can see column names, so flipper length, and let's say body mass. Now I'm missing one of these. Okay. Um, now it's complaining because I need a comma here. And this, okay. Let, and let's do one more. Um, so, for example, little bit. And now let's see what happens. If I really see my radio buttons or not. Um, and I actually see the radio buttons, which I'm really happy. But probably I forgot again the sidebar the side panel or sidebar layout because I have the same problem that we had before. So I forgot the sidebar layout here. Layout, opening here and closing. And now it's when you see also like it's good to be organized with the indentations because you have a lot of functions inside functions. And um, um, yeah, uh, you will really need to take care of that. She's just want to see what happens when she's on the same side. So this goes. 
So it's, I, I'm actually getting an error that says main panel is missing with no default. So the sidebar panel needs a main panel um, inside. The sidebar layout, sorry, needs a main uh, title panel inside. Okay, so now we have the input of uh, the um, right of that the user will be able to choose. Now we want to do the plot. So I actually have already done one plot, uh, but let's um, do it here. So inside the server function, I will say um, my data, my data, and then um, select, and then I will say, okay, select input, um, input bar, that's how it's called, right? And here I will be just selecting um, actually the input that the user chose here. Um, and yeah, I don't have to forget that now I'm using dplyr, so I have to uh, upload tidyverse, um, and I have to upload also uh, ggplot, because I want to use ggplot, so we will actually see one example. So, um, so far, actually, yeah, I'm just selecting my data. I will just run it to see if what. So it will slow in the, nothing will change. Uh, it doesn't like that uh, there is some input outside a render function. So I will just say output uh, dollar sign plot, and I will say render plot. You've misspelled render. Thank you. And I plot, and then I have to close this and that here. And let's see, yeah, now it's like the thing. Uh, okay, I will just call it as there, my plot. Or I will just change this. To be. Um, so I have a render function. So far I'm just, well, I will, I, I'm not creating any plot yet. But let's just let's say okay, GC plot. Sorry, Lisa, I think uh, you have just forgotten the T in output. Okay, that's good. Thank you. It's great to have yeah people helping me. <laughs> um, so GG plot, um, and now I have to think. Okay, what do we? For example, a histogram. So geom histogram. Um, and the value will be just the, um, actually, yeah, I don't even need this, right? Because I can just say that um, my variable, um, yeah, actually that is the, that I can just put inside the eyes the variable that the, that the user selected. So I don't need this. And I can just say here input, uh, input bar. And let's see if this works. Now I'm just, um, I just have all the variables, all the penguins inside. So, So it's I think you need to, uh, to stop first in the first uh, application. You need to stop and rerun, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, great. Thanks. Let's see now. Thank you. Hmm. And so now it's the, yeah, now we have to say, okay, what is uh, actually, yeah, actually, I just. This, this is just like the name of the variable. It's not the content of the column. So I need a way to just select this column, right? 
So I will just do something else before. So you, you, you see why this is not working? So here input bar is the name of the column, right? So I will just here add some, something that is really very useful um, for R is this function that is here. Um, I think I saw it here. Um, this function switch, I don't know if you have used it in R, but it's very, very useful for me in, this, in the cases where you want, for example, to, um, to select one variable of a data frame. And here I will just say, okay, uh, for example, value um, will be the output of this switch. And now the object is actually the input um, bar. bar. And now case, so case, um, the user change chooses this thing then the action is um, actually choosing um, the, this column, right? Um, let's see. Uh, no, I think I will do it differently. I think this is very useful, this switch thing, but I will just do it as I always started doing it. So I will just do it um, data. I'm sorry, Elisa, uh, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. can I just uh, suggest something really, um, it's just an, an idea, yeah. and uh, I think it, it can does the trick. Um, recently, the, in the last version of ggplot, um, they added a function called IAS string. I think uh, it should work uh, with character strings. If you just replace IES with uh, IES um, slash string. So AES -A -E uh, slash? Yes, no, it's not, uh, not slash. I, uh, the, um, I don't know how to call it in English. The, um, yes. Underscore. Yeah. Underscore, yeah, exactly. Underscore right. string. Uh, it's quite recent. Yeah. yeah. So if I there, think well, we can, I mean, let's try. Otherwise, we do it the other way. Let's try. So I will just comment this. Um, so underscore string, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's working. Cool. Um, we still have some issue with the sidebar layout anyways. And what I suggest is just, I will just look at my other R, shiny apps. And the title panel is outside and then I have a sidebar layout. So let's see if that can solve what we have here. Um, title panel is outside. Mm. So I put myself in quite, in quite a uncomfortable situation because you see that I'm yeah I need also some time to do that but I think it's really useful when people see others errors while coding so that's why I'm doing that um, so title panel and then sidebar panel here and then main panel there so sidebar layout so I have sidebar panel here and main panel here. So this should work. Let's see. And it doesn't like it. Ah, so we have a problem here. It's a comma problem. See now, main panel is missing, which is strange. Probably it's because this is not quite first to be. So, yeah, because. This should be here. So yeah, it's now this also missing comma because now a comma should be there. 
and hopefully now it works. Yeah, and now it works, which is um, good. The other things that we probably want to see uh, each, we, the, the aim of this was to um, compare the species. So now um, we are going to say face it. Um, And we are going to do face up graph using, I think it was called species. And now we can see here if it was free. Yeah, species. So let's stop running this up. We run it again. Um, yeah. And now I like it, but not so much. Let's do this here so that we really can compare the species. Stop the app and reload it, okay. So now it looks more like, no, again, not. Mm, face it three, maybe. It's just one, one plot under the other so that we can really compare. Now we can, for example, compare the three species given bill length, um, flipper length, and bill depth. So, um, I so before we end, I will show you the final version of this, which I already sent you because I want to show you some things. So, the final version of the app I tried doing. Um, which is, I mean, it's the same idea, so we run this up. It's the same idea, but a bit um, more sophisticated. So it's actually the same thing. So the species, um, a, a histogram per characteristic, and then the user can choose, um, okay, which um, <laughs> characteristic to see. This is like these uh, cooking programs where you just, they show you the before and the after, and the after looks really cool, but you didn't go from the before and the after. But I guess if you use Shishi plot, at least you, you know how to um, customize the plot. But what I wanted to show you is how to add a, a picture inside the, the app, because it has some tricks. So actually the picture, what I'm using to add the picture, so here we have again the satellite, um, the sidebar layout, the radio buttons that we did, um, but what do I have inside the, the sidebar panel is just something that is called tax dollar sign. If you know a bit of, so what is this tax dollar sign? So this tax list has all the tags that, that uh, come from, um, from HTML. So for example, if you use um, R Markdown and you use uh, four um, hashtags, that means it's a header number four. If you use one hashtag, that means it's a header number one. And in, in for example, here, I could say this, thing, this title panel is a tag, uh, tag dollar sign header number one and what i will create is i will say i will create an html that says this is the first header so i will just run this will look the same maybe the um just the penguin data the, the title will look different i can say this is a header number six and if i reload the app then it just looks so the title looks smaller so it's just an html uh, tag that is saying okay how is how important is this, this header and there is another HTML tag which which creates so actually, um, which creates um, which includes an image in a in a HTML and that tag is IMG and then you need to say okay where is my image so it will be source and the name of the file and then you can choose like height and width the thing is that this file does not have to, this is very kind of different to what happens, for example, in Markdown, this file is not saved in the same directory as, um, as my app. It's saved actually in a directory that, in a directory in, that is called www, that is inside, that is actually in the same folder where the app is, 
right? And here I have my uh, two pictures. So actually I'm using this picture, the penguin. Um, yeah. So, for example, we said before that if you wanted to customize your, your, your uh, Shiny apps, you will need maybe a CSS file. That file would also be in the www. And if you, for example, want to upload your Shiny apps to the shinyapps.io, like to share them, you also have to follow this conversion of having this uh, folder called like this. Because everything, Shiny app will look for this uh, folder and will look for the files inside that folder. It has to be called, so app has to be called always app.r and uh, www. So this folder has to be called always the same. So I think this is uh, what I wanted to show you. And I see that. And and then what what uh, is here is just like so make the ggplot a bit prettier. And here I'm using the switch the switch function. I tell you to choose the um, the i the the, la the y label of the plot. But apart from that, so is uh, what we also did together. So I think we are now getting to the end of the presentation. I was not sharing the screen. So now you, we have some time for questions and doubts. What's <laughs> wrong? Uh, I have maybe one question. Yeah. This www uh, folder is just for like. CSS, HTML, like more like aesthetics, um, but it's not for like putting the data or something like that. Um, so I or if I would have a folder data, then I would do that within that. Yeah, yeah, it's for okay. it's for everything that has to do with like the appearance of the of the user interface. So okay, as images, yeah. Okay, and the, the, a data folder I would just keep separate. Yeah, and then for example, if you want to have other R files with functions that your app uses, that could be the same in the same folder as your app.r, but they have to be two different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> um, can I have a, a question if you have sure. time? Yeah. I'm wondering how um, how fast the this running can be. For example, if you make a program like a, do some simulation, like to run like a thousand or ten thousand or or more times, will it take a really long time to finish that? Or like how robust it can be if you write a program in this shiny? Yeah. So I mean the um. The thing is that the use, the server is running um, the R code. So uh, one thing. Ah, so Divya is asking asking me something. <laughs> so I will I will uh, say. So she has to leave now. So bye, Divya. Thank you for being here and for the help. No worries. Nice yeah. to see everyone. Answer. So get all your questions answered and see you next time. Bye. And yeah. Bye, Divya. Thanks. <laughs> um, so now back to the question. So the server is running R. It's running an R code. So if your R code takes, I don't know, 10 seconds to run, it will also take 10 seconds in the server. I mean, the server might be more powerful than your computer, then it might take uh, shorter, but it will. It, 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 so if your R code is already slow, probably the app will be at least slower as your R code. And that's one point. And the other, so yeah, it's, uh, that's one thing. And the other, you, you should have to see if you can, for example, if you are going to model something, you will have to see if there are things you can run before your app. So if, for example, if you're running maybe five possible models and, you're, and the user can choose between five possible models. So if it's a south, I don't know, if it's south and a possible models, I don't know, but if it's like 10 possible models, maybe you can save the output of your model and load the output of the model instead of running the whole model. That's 
one thing, for example. That might not be possible when the possibilities are much or the combinations are much higher than 10 or 5. And the other thing is something I mentioned shortly that you can do in order to optimize your app is um, to see where you are putting the code. So as I told you, everything that is, is inside the render function will be, up, will be run each time the user changes something. And maybe there are things that will not change uh, when the user changes an input. Um, and then if you put that part of the code outside, then you will probably also optimize your app. So, yeah. But I mean, it's, these apps are running R. So if, run, if R is not very fast, then probably the app won't be very fast. The other thing, for example, I don't know, I did some apps using polygons. And then loading the polygons takes some time. But then I just load the poly polygons once. So maybe the app takes some time to load, but once the app, the app load is, is uploaded, then it's reasonably fast. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I just came, uh, there's another question just came to mind. So I saw your presentation because I missed, at, I missed the beginning part. Um, I also saw some presentation that you can embed the app into the presentation or did you make a presentation in R? It looks like something Yeah, like so the presentation is made in R, so that's another maybe another chapter or another meetup, but it's really easy. I can I, I will again share my screen one second and then here you are seeing if I put you for file, new file, your file, ugh, file, new file, and then um, you have some R presentation here. Then you just, it will tell you, okay, save it somewhere, so test. And then you will have a presentation uh, that you can, for example, I will say preview, and this is my present, so you can see it here. And this is already a presentation test, so you can see it here. And then this is just like some pre-made presentation that comes with R, but it's actually how I did the presentation. Yeah, so it's quite easy uh, and straightforward if you just stick to the format. If you want to change, then it gets tricky. But if you stick to what they, uh, it does not get so tricky. You need to like spend some more time. But if you stick to the format they, they suggest, then it's quite uh, straightforward. Okay, so it's also possible to embed the app into the presentation. So um, the thing is that there is, it is possible, but the app will, if you want to share it, the app has to be hosted by a server. Um, okay. it's, that you can, it's not that you can just, it's not like our markdown that you can, or like this presentation that I just share an, an HTML and you open it and see everything. Because the app, the Shiny app needs to have some machine running R, and that's not possible inside an HTML. So it is possible, but you still have, if you want to share it to some people that don't have R, you need to host your app into a Shiny, into a server, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that's it. So, no more questions. <laughs> Um, Jay, just a remark to the your yeah. last question. I, I think it's possible if you use the tag iframe to include, for example, um, a shiny app or so, as you said, if it's uploaded to a server. Yeah, yeah, it is possible, um, but you need to have it uploaded somewhere. I also did not try. I don't know if you, you just tried, tried it. Uh, yeah, yes, if you want, I could just send you an example in the um, chat. And you can copy it. Yeah. So, I guess. Are there any questions or not more questions? Um, Elisa? Yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> do you save the scripts uh, or what you have done today? I can take it. 
Yeah. I, they are already in a link. This link will be available for a week. Yeah. During this week, I will upload the, um, the files into the GitHub repository. Okay. I like waiting because usually people find mistakes, typos, and errors on my presentation, so I just correct them before I upload it. So thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> and, so yeah. and then, so if there are no more questions, uh, next meetup will be on eye tracking uh, processing. So for all studying psychology or in the area of psychology or text uh, processing um, analysis, and um, yeah, probably it will be useful for you. So this time will be Divya presenting. Um, yeah. You can, so you can always, you know, we have the Twitter account, we have the um, meetup account where you can just receive the, uh, yeah, all the, if we are doing an event and a date. Um, yeah, I hope to see you there. Mm -hmm. so if I guess there are no more questions, I shall thank you all. Thank you very much. Man. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. And I hope to see you next time. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. See you soon. Bye. 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 Ciao.